Today on Houston Live, Team USA gymnast Jordan Childs is flipping right into our studio. Find out how she's teaming up with her best friend and fellow Olympian, Simone Biles, to inspire a generation of female athletes. And are you looking for a better night's sleep? It may be time to replace that old mattress. We're going to show you how you can shop local and rest easy with clicker delivery. Plus, we don't have better things to do. Country singer Terry Clark fills us in on her historic connection to the Astrodome and what you can expect from her Houston concert this weekend. And grab your pail and shovel. Look at that. We're heading to the island for the 34th annual Sandcastle competition. Joe Sam is live in Galveston turning a pile of sand into a home fit for a king. All of that and more happening today on Houston Life. Live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Houston Life. It is Thursday, baby, Friday, Friday yes. Eve, August 19th. Friday, Courtney Junior. Zavala. I know, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Keith Garvin hey, is in the house yes. and for Derek today, who's yeah. taking a day off. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm always so happy. We, we love Houston Life. I, I love you. I love Houston. I love Derek. So happy to be here in his shoes. You know, hard <laughs> to fill those, but, yeah, really happy to be here. Uh, always love to, to hang out with Houston Life. Well, Perfect. we love having you because you're so <laughs> much fun, and we're, we're going to get to all the good stuff. But you're yeah. a busy guy. Not only do you have the news to anchor... Yeah. At yeah. four o'clock in just an mm -hmm. hour. So um, yeah. you also have another little, little event. Change. Yes, yes. Six thirty. We are doing a live uh, Facebook event with uh, HISD parents. Yeah, that's coming up. Parents, administrators, guardians. Yeah, back to school. Yeah, a lot of questions people have, in especially in particular when it comes to masks and and things of that nature. And so we're going to be able to answer all those questions. We have a panel of other folks from HISD. Six thirty, seven thirty. So yeah, if, if you're an HISD parent, you certainly want to get in on that for sure. And that's a great way to get those questions answered as the last days of summer are looming here. And you just went through that. The last baby girl. Yes. Senior in high school yeah, this year, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have four daughters. And yes, the youngest, uh, we find that, that Reagan right there. Wow. Yeah, she's cheerleader at her school, Seven Lakes High School, KDISD. And uh, yeah, this was her yesterday oh. uh, about to go out the driveway. And, you know, yeah, you know, my, my whole life, you know, in my career and in my life, I'm surrounded by women. You know what? <laughs> I don't know what God's trying to tell me. But yeah, surrounded by women my entire life. And yes, yes. So Reagan, it was, it was, it was weird because... Because, you know, it's it's gone by so fast, but then, you know, it's been 12 years. But, you know, my gosh, yeah, it's amazing to see the baby girl walk out the door, you know, for that fast, that last uh, senior year. I year know. Year. I feel like, too, when it's the youngest, the, the oldest and the youngest, sorry, middle <laughs> people. I mean, they kind of, you know, but the, the last one to go through it, I was just telling AJ, he's going to have, he's going to be in fifth grade on Monday. Uh -huh. And I said, this will be the last first day picture in this particular school because yeah. he's going to move on to middle school. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of a weird revelation. It is. Yeah, yeah. You, got, you, got, you really have to learn to enjoy every single moment, even the tough ones. Stay in them because it, they're worth it, you know, right. and because it goes by so fast. And so, yeah, we're almost empty nesters. I don't know what we're going to do with ourselves. Goodness I mean, goodness. I see I see lots of, like, hot tubbing, <laughs> some, some yes. slow jams, uh -huh. you know? Yes, yeah, some vacations. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, now you're talking. Yeah, we'll, I know. We'll, we'll, we'll be okay. We'll, we'll find a way to... I think you'll just figure out how to visit all the girls. Those exactly. will be all yes. your vacations. Exactly, yes. Yeah, grandkids one day maybe. We'll see. Oh, I can't. Ooh. I mean, look at Cambrell. He's I know. living yes. large he for those is. grandbabies. Yes, yeah, they're so cute too. Yeah, without a doubt. Okay, yeah. so have you caught up? I mean, I, you were gone in Tokyo. We yeah. chatted before you left. <laughs> what was this experience like? And are you still doing laundry from the amount of clothes that you brought with still you? Still a little bit of laundry, <laughs> yes. Yeah, you know, so first, so Tokyo, I love it. It was never on my bucket list. I always wanted to go, but not a bucket list per se. It's definitely on my bucket list to return to with Lisa one day. And I would say, if you've never been, put it on your bucket list. Fascinating, amazing city. Loved it. So efficiently run. And we only got to see, like, maybe a quarter of it. Right. You know? So, but, yeah, love And you talk about clean. The whole time we were there, I saw one piece of plastic on the ground. It was just amazing. Yeah. Immaculate. So, well, yeah, I okay. loved, love it. Yeah. I loved following you on social media. Of course, the quarantine time in your hotel room and just different yeah. things. And then like getting out some of the highlights. Of course, you covered the events. You talked to all the local athletes. Mm -hmm. That was amazing. Yes, but was also fun. kind of exploring the city, too. Yeah. Yeah. We got the, the cuisine. You know, there are a lot of cities that have a reputation for something, you know, like Houston, Texas has a reputation for 
you know, barbecue and we live up to it. Tokyo, reputation for sushi, oh my gosh, they live up to Insane. it. Insane. The grocery stores, we, I, I don't know what it was. It's not like we don't have food or grocery stores here in the United <laughs> States. The grocery stores in Tokyo were just so fascinating because they were so neat. Most, you know, so much is, is it's so, so much fresh food. And it's, it, they were. Just, we would sometimes take a trip just to go to the 7-Eleven. Is like a grocery store. It's very different than the 7-Elevens here. They don't have Slurpees. It's like like a real grocery store. What? Yeah, they have sushi in there and all sorts of stuff. And we would sometimes just take a trip to the 7-Eleven just to like hang out for 15 minutes that we had, you know, during the day because they were just so cool. You know? It looks super fancy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fancy, but also just so well put together. You know, in Tokyo, biggest city in the world, they obviously, you know, space is an issue, so they make the most efficient use of their space right and so their grocery stores are really compact you're not going to see a lot of huge grocery stores there they're all you know relatively small compared to you know for American standards but everything is just so neat and in order and like you just go and you're like I want to buy everything you know <laughs> I love it and you know what a great display I know leading up to the games there was so much talk of course they uh, delayed a year there yeah. was so much talk are they ready are they not ready should we be there mm -hmm. I feel like what we saw on TV they were wonderful hosts the oh, games yeah. were great but you were there on the ground and you say the same thing oh without a doubt yes yeah no the so and there were some minor protests like very very few but that that did not speak for the the rest of the population most of the population very very happy that that the, the Olympics were there they were just kind of bummed because you know no spectators and they yeah. didn't feel like they could really show off Japan and show off Tokyo for the great city it was and so I definitely understand that um, so they were there a little bit of ambivalence but you know they were happy the Olympics were there they were just like wow you know they, they really wanted to be able to participate themselves but you know the one of the most polite societies oh, I've ever been to. Uh, just very warm people. Food was good, and it's just a, it's an amazingly run city for sure. Yeah. Well, I love that. I love that you said polite. So I'm guessing you didn't meet any Karens over there. <laughs> uh, not not a lot of Karens. <laughs> I mean, you know, when, if you ask someone for directions, they not only point you in the right direction, they will take you, if not the and full make way, sure. halfway to make sure you you get to where you're going. I mean, yeah, they're just really. And I, I've never. It's it's part of the custom. I've never bowed so much in my life. I should have done more deadlifts to get my get my back ready for it. <laughs> but uh, you know, yes, they. It's. I, I, I don't have, uh, you know, I have so many great things to say about Tokyo. That is sure. fantastic. And the people, yeah. It looked great. Okay, so the reason the reason why I brought up the Karen topic, yes. you know, this is kind of a fun <laughs> thing that we like to do on Houston Life. We bring up these kind of obscure topics that uh -huh. we talk about. So, you know, pressure of naming a child, that's a big deal, oh, right? My, oh, I my mean, gosh, then you yeah. Oh, no, I dated that one, not yeah. naming my kid yeah, now that. Now we have the ceremonies for that kind of stuff. Uh, you yeah, know, it's yeah. craziness. But mm -hmm. apparently nobody wants to name their child Karen anymore. I wonder why. I yeah, know. Well, I think we know why. Well, this is this is data, and if your mm. name is Karen and you're a lovely person, oh. I'm so sorry about this. It's just unfortunate. We, but we this love is, the Karens out we there. We do. Yes. We yeah. love the real Karens. <laughs> this is data from the Social Security Administration yeah. that in 2020, the name Karen dropped 171 spots on the list of yeah. the most popular baby names from 660 to 831. It's basically the lowest rank yeah. for the name Karen on the Social Security list since 19. 1927. Yeah, but when you say 1927, <laughs> that makes it, that was a really, really long time ago. Yeah, Karen, you know, uh, the name Karen has gotten a bad rap, uh, in the last, especially in the last year and a half. Yes. And I know some really amazing Karens as well. But I do yeah, too. People just, uh, yeah, no one wants to be, not a lot of people want to be associated with that name. I know. Days, so. I, I worked with a really great Karen too. Full article is on mentalfloss.com if you want a little chuckle today. Yeah. Now, <laughs> Keith, this next topic we picked specifically for you. Oh, okay. And this is all about rap music oh, and the rap I, scene. I, I'm, I grew up on rap music. It's in my, yeah, it's in right? my heart. Yes, And yeah. I always think, like, when we talk about rap, it's like East Coast, West Coast. Don't Texas forget, doesn't really. Don't, oh, the South. Oh, we're part of that. Oh, my gosh. I yeah. know. And I the, I think Texas led the way for the, the, the Dirty South Southern rap. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, especially the Ghetto Boys. They were, like, the first really uh, uh, Southern rap group to go mainstream. Yes. So, yeah, H Houston is, is where it's at. And then, you know, you have the whole screw music. That's like, yeah. yeah. It's a thing. It's You're a thing, very sure. knowledeible on this. So you need, to, yeah. you need to check out this article <laughs> in Texas Monthly because they just released a list of um, 20 artists that have a connection 
Austin mm -hmm. to Houston. And these are basically essential Texas rap tracks. Yes, if you like rap, if you like Texas, you you you, you need some of this in your, your playlist. And sure. before you even before I even mention this article, you uh -huh. named like four of the seven already on the four of the twenty that are on the list. So uh -huh. Disco Al, Ghetto Boys, um, they're on the list multiple times. Yes. DJ Screw. I only knew I mean, here's the thing. I said in the office when I was reading this article a little bit earlier, I was like, I, I mean, I kind of feel like I'm a cool mom. I'm up yeah, on, you know, the you're scene. You're one of the coolest moms. What do you mean? You yeah, know, I, I pay attention to the rap music. It's on my playlist. I love it. I literally, I felt like my street cred went down seven <laughs> notches because I, I had to. Now, when I played the songs, right. I said, oh, yes. I know this one. Uh -huh, yeah. I know that one. So there's so many. It, 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 all so good. Yeah, well, a lot of these haven't, you know, been played or been around for a long time. I mean, we're talking, you know, 1980, but so it, it's understandable that you may not remember every single one, but some good stuff. One that's not on this list is a Wanna Be a Baller by Lil Troy. I mean, he's oh, from Houston. Yeah. That's like a classic Houston jam. It's not even the top 20. I would put that in the top five, if not top three. Well, listen, yeah. we're going to find out who wrote it, and we're going to send an email. Some, no. su <laughs> some suggestions, yes, yeah, yeah. But there is, you know, when I was listening to it, the article is great. Again, it's Texas mm -hmm. Monthly. If you go in, they'll go song by song yeah. and then there's going to be a little arrow on the side where you can yes. listen to a little uh -huh. sn snippet of the song yep, yep. and some of these really I think it was um which song was I think it was Car Freak Ghetto Boys uh -huh. uh, if if I didn't if I just pressed the button closed my eyes and didn't listen I was I thought for a second I said is this LL Cool J I mean it had this yeah, vibe but uh -huh. then I look at the year right 1980s it, it, way ahead of their time mm -hmm. oh big way time ahead. yeah 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 and uh, Ghetto Boys uh, mind playing tricks on me I think that should be number one that's my favorite I mean we were bumping that in '91 my I was in college and that was that was a jam for the summer of '91 but uh, it's it's on the list but Keith Garvin in college <laughs> I want to I want to go back oh, to that time thank goodness we didn't have social media back then. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. Okay, more, much more fun to come. I love this topic. Also, still to come, no matter where you went to school, Keith, the cafeteria was always a hot topic of conversation. Yeah, sure. We're going down memory lane with school lunches we won't ever forget. Yeah, can't wait to <laughs> get to that one. Joe Sam, also, he's enjoying the beach in Galveston as they prepare for a big competition. We're going to check in with Joe coming up next. Okay, this is going down memory lane big time. <laughs> School cafeteria lunches from your childhood that you're probably never going to eat again. It's a list of 23 lunches on BuzzFeed.com. Yeah. Brings back some memories. <laughs> it brings back a little one, especially like milk cartons, apple juice, <laughs> the ever famous rectangle pizzas. Oh, oh my goodness. How about this one? A meal that is 100% tan. It's a tan meal. Corn dogs, tater tots. I still love tater tots to this day. Yes. I know. Yeah. There's nothing better than a good tater They're tot. Good. Yeah, good stuff. Even with uh, yeah, hot dogs, I can do my uh, yeah, tater tots with for sure. <laughs> it just makes everything it better. Does, There's also does. garlic bread as an entree. As an entree. Okay, yeah, because I, I still eat garlic bread today, but it, it's usually on the side. side. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so it's but, like a yeah. full entree. But when you're young, you eat, you know, whatever tastes good. It's really, like yeah. bread and carbs. Mm -hmm. That's that's all we needed, yes. right? And a, and a little bit of orange soda, maybe. Yeah, my favorite, I I love chocolate milk. Oh, oh. my gosh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I love so good. chocolate milk. Yeah, and then I, I couldn't, we, we didn't have it in school, but uh, Strawberry Quick was my probably my favorite. But, oh, yeah, but boy. But in school, chocolate milk for sure. Okay, all right. Now let's bring in Lauren Kelly with our question of the day. Hey, Lauren. Okay ever have those pizza pockets that was like the only day that I wanted to buy so it was like a big <laughs> fat pizza roll but just like all in one all right but we want to hear from you of course from square pizzas to chocolate milk cartons what were your favorite school lunch items and of course as always we've got some great answers coming in let's start with Lori Lori writes in the big butter rolls lived on those in high school they were 10 cents and I saved the change from the two dollars my mom gave me all week for the weekend oh my gosh the these prices totally date me, LOL. <laughs> Let's jump over to Pete. He writes in, that so-called burrito was my fave in elementary school, late 80s. Remember the burrito? You remember? <laughs> it drained out all the orange grease on the counter. Oh, oh, that yeah. was awesome, though, if I had one today, it may give me heartburn for a month. Oh, and those jack-in-the-box type tacos. Yeah, love those, too. Those were the days. Oh, two tacos for 99 cents. I'm so still in for that. And finally, Terry writes in, the ice cream cart that 
came around oh. in the afternoon during elementary school. Uh, uh, yeah. I never had an ice cream cart in elementary school, but if you guys did, head over to the Houston Life Facebook page and join the conversation. We'll, of course, share your comments a little bit later on. Keith and Courtney, what about you guys? Okay, so I remember, I think I was in second grade or third grade or something. I was so excited because it was taco day at school oh. and I got mm -hmm. the taco, mm -hmm. cracked a tooth, oh. had emergency tooth surgery that later that afternoon. Taco. I did! It must have been a really good taco, oh my goodness. I mean, hard. was it made out of concrete? I'm not really sure. Yeah, yeah, and I remember, you know, we were talking about prices. I remember back then when I, you know, this is really going to date me, sodas were 25 cents. Oh, 25 yeah. 25 cents for a soda. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I need oh, the ice cream cart. I need Can that. Can we hook too. that up Let's over here? Let's get a KTRC, yes. Houston Life ice cream cart, yeah, for sure. All right, Lauren, thanks so much. We'll see sure. you in a little bit. Okay. Well, you know, it's the end of summer. Why not head to the beach and build a sandcastle? Sounds like a good idea. You're mm -hmm. going to be in some pretty good company this weekend. That's right. On East Beach, these will not be your average sandcastles. More than 60 teams, mostly architects, are going to build some very impressive structures out of sand. And Joe Sam now with a preview of this weekend's event. What's going on, Joe? Yeah, so it's really, really great. It's a great day to be out here going to be having a good time this weekend too for the sandcastle competition. It's going to be a lot of different unique sandcastles that you're going to be able to check out with your family and friends. And I have Rusty here with me to tell me a little bit more about what's going to be happening because this is the 34th annual time that you're doing this here. So I know it's going to be bigger and better this year. Yes, 34th annual American Institute of Architects Sandcastle Competition. In order to participate, you have to have an architect on your team. Most of these are architecture firms that are designing and building these, um, and they are amazing once they're finished. Absolutely, and we have Sarah here who's also on the committee, the uh, co-chair for the committee. Yes. There's going to be a lot of different types of designs. We've seen some in the past. We have video of actually what happened in the past competitions with these amazing designs. What are you going to be looking for this year? Sure, we're looking for creativity, and we're looking for craftsmanship, and we're just looking for people to have fun on the beach. Absolutely. And we're going to have a lot of different judging criteria, too. So the public, are gonna, they're going to be able to come out here and pick their favorite, too, correct? Absolutely. So one of our judging categories is actually public favorite. So we want people on the beach to come by and sign the ballot for public favorite, which will tally up at the end of the day. Absolutely. Rusty, why is this so important that you put this on every single year? I think it's really important to see the creativity and the talent that we have here in Houston and Galveston. Right. It's rare that people get to see or get to appreciate the talent of our architects up close and personal like this. I mean, we, we live in architecture every every day, but when you see it this way, it's very different. And it, it, it shows it, you know, in living color. Actually, not color, I guess, in sand. <laughs> right, in brown. <laughs> in brown. But it's also, it's a, it's a fundraiser for the American Institute of Architects and for the city of Galveston. This is one of the biggest money makers every year for the city of Galveston. Absolutely. Really quickly tell people where they can go to find out more information. AIAHouston.org. All right, and we're also going to have that information on our website, HoustonLife.tv. When we come back, we're going to be meeting with one of the instructors. He's going to be showing me how to make one of these cool sandcastle designs and how you're going to be able to check that out this weekend as well. Right now, we're going to send things back to you in the studio, Courtney and Keith. Okay, I mm. expect a full Astro World replica <laughs> in 20 minutes. Yes, <laughs> Those, they look amazing out there. Wow. Really, great day to be on the beach. Thanks, Joe. All right, when we come back, ooh, this is so exciting. Olympic gymnast Jordan Childs is joining us live. That's right, she shares why she is hitting the road with Bestie. Simone Biles, do not go anywhere. Houston Life is going to be right back. All right, she nearly gave up on gymnastics, but found her way back to the sport at World Champion Center in spring. And after appearing at the Tokyo Olympics, she's now a silver medalist. Let's give it up for Team USA gymnast Jordan Childs, who's joining us now here in studio. Hi. Welcome home, girlfriend. And I know it's like old friends. You're, you're re reunited here. Yes, yeah, yes. here on this side of the pond for sure. Yeah, awesome to see you. You, you, you know how, how proud we are of you, so so happy to have you here. Oh, yeah. Thank you, thank you. I'm happy to be here. And, you know, proudly wearing your silver medal. It's fantastic. I mean, can you sum this up, your first Olympic Games? I, how do you put that into words, Jordan? I don't know. <laughs> Those are my <laughs> words. The experience was an amazing experience. I definitely would do it again. The Olympic Games was something that I've always dreamt of ever since I was younger. So just going out there and having fun and doing what I love was an amazing experience. The girls, we had such a great bond. Yeah, your, your mom's in here, and I remember I, I got this from her after you all won the silver medal, and uh, we, we did an interview with your parents, and she, she put it really, really wonderfully. She said, you all didn't lose gold, you won silver. Yes. And I just love the way that was put in. I, I don't know if, if people really understood how much pressure you all were under to keep that, that silver. 
It was well, amazing what you did. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> the pressure was something that was definitely in there. Uh, we went through so much just starting from the very beginning all the way to the end. I mean, we fought all the way. No matter what was going to happen, we were just going to keep fighting. And I mean, that's why we call ourselves the fighting force. So we just did what we had to do. And we just let the, we really, really just let the pressure just, just go. It's, that is really, you know, the, um, the status of the type of athlete that you are. Texo is walking around here in the studio. <laughs> yeah. he, that's just what he does. Like, he runs. I, I smell a silver medal. I do. Yes. It's around here somewhere. <laughs> um, but the sisterhood, and I think that's what's such an incredible story here, because the sisterhood on your team is so remarkable. It's, it's really so deep and beyond teammates. Oh, thank you. I love them so much. Um, one in particular, Simone, she's like a big sister to me. She's my role model. She will forever be my partner in crime. And what she did out there was something that inspired yeah. all of us. So I think a lot of us, even the girls that are part of the team, all understood what was happening. And we loved her. We supported her. And that's what we did. Yeah, you, you, we mentioned at the top that at one point, 2017, 2018, you, you almost walked away from, from gymnastics. Yes. What, what was it that, that helped you regain your love for the sport? Well, actually having a conversation with Simone and after 2018 World Trials, she told me, she was like, look, you know, you're you. You can do whatever you put your mind to. And so, you know, I just took that back and told my parents, like, this is what I want to do. I'm moving. And that's when I moved to Texas. And... I started training at WCC and then that's when everything just finally was being put back into a big humongous puzzle and I just found the love back and I also thank my coaches as well because they helped me. And it, you know this is a really interesting lesson I think for any athlete out there, male or female. Um, at such a young age to be able to kind of go through that mental game of, of the sport mm -hmm. and to pick yourself up and realize this is where I want to go, kind of see the future. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's beyond your years right now, Jordan. And so <laughs> I, I just, I really do. I think that that's so incredible to find, you know, I always talk about the fire in the belly mm -hmm. for something, whether it's sports or whatever the passion may be. I mean, I feel like nothing can stop you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. I mean, there's a lot of things that I might not show, and there's a lot of things that I might show, but I am, I'm, I'm just, I just like to be free. I just like to enjoy every moment. So that's just what I do in my gymnastics. I mean, roads aren't always straight. It took a very, very long time just to get here. So I'm really happy. The one thing you love to show is your sneaker collection. Yes. You are a sneaker head. Girl. You, yes. Tell us about the, you got some Jordans on right now, right? Yes, I actually have the Jordan 1 USA's on. Um, I got these for trials because I was like, you know what, it's trials, let's just, I need to find a shoe. So that's what I did. I'm a sneakerhead at heart. I'm a huge sneakerhead at heart. I get it from my mom. I uh, just recently got a lot of Jordans somebody had sent me, and I was just really, really <laughs> excited. It's actually Michael Jordan's daughter. Um, <laughs> Which, by the way, that's why you're named Jordan, <laughs> yes, right? Yes, I am. That is why I'm named Jordan. I'm so his named... daughter sent you some shoes, Yes, huh? his daughter sent me some shoes. And oh, I wow. almost cried. Like, I literally almost just fainted. It was crazy. Oh, my it. gosh. What a great connection. Also, what came out of the Olympics is the nail game. Oh, my <laughs> God. Did we get a little tight oh, on the playing. nails? Oh, yeah. They weren't playing with those nails. No, y'all. I mean, these are so fantastic. I'm loving everything about it. And what do you have on there now? You've got it's some like... good. Let's see. Which Let's camera? This camera. is 21 here. Yes. I don't even know. It's just a little design. There's some always, silver in there. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, there's silver. There's some, like, gold going on. There's some pink. Um, I always get my nails so long, and everybody always is just like, Jordan, why are your nails so long? And I'm just like, I really don't know. But actually, the reason why I do it is because I believe that it helps me stay on bars. Because I know if you fall, you're going to chip a nail. You're going to break it. So in my mind, I, I have to remind myself, like, there's a technique that you have to do yeah. in order for you to stay on the bar. Don't, Don't break, break a nail. nail. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> that, we learned so, oh my gosh, yeah, don't break the nail, okay. Yeah. Okay, we're learning something else. And Hashtag, then, don't break the nail. Don't break the nail. <laughs> um, let's talk about the big tour that's coming here. Yes. Um, it's going to be here in October 8th at Toyota Center with your bestie. Yes, with my bestie. And then, of course, we're going to have the all-star team. 
There's going to be me, Simone, Michaela, Grace, and Jade, and we're so excited. Think of it as a gymnastics spectacular with like, it's like a pop concert, both gymnastics and dancing. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have LED lights. We're going to have a lot of fun out there. It's going to be a great experience. You guys should all come. You oh. guys too. Yeah. Let's For sure. We will be there. Up. And you'll be at UCLA in the, in the spring, right? Yes. Correct? Starting UCLA? Okay. I will had to be, get that in. Yes, I will be in UCLA. I go in January, so I'll be a Bruin. Thank that you. That is so awesome. Thank we appreciate you. you stopping by yes. today. Again, that's Gold Over America Tour that's coming to the Toyota Center. You can um, find more information and also to connect with Jordan, swing by our website, HoustonLife.tv. Congratulations, yes. Thank girlfriend. You. It's great Indeed. to see you. Indeed. Great to see y'all, too. All right, coming up, the pandemic era shortage are a real thing, but a local mattress company shares their secret that has kept the inventory in stock. And I will have a check of what is coming up for the news at 4 o'clock. Houston Life is going to be back in two minutes. You got to go. I guess I need to leave. Don't break a nail on the way out, Keith. I'll try yet. Yeah. Hashtag don't break the nail. Go, okay. go. <laughs> Well, welcome back to Houston Life. I'm Courtney Savala. Just about 3.30 now on this Thursday, we're going to check in with Lauren Kelly to see what, have a look what you're saying about our question of the day. Hey, Lauren. Yeah, earlier we asked from square pizzas to chocolate milk cartons, what are your favorite school lunch <laughs> items from back in the day? Let's take a look at what you had to say. Andrea writes in, fresh baked Otis Spunkmeyer chocolate chip cookies the school would sell on Fridays. They have those here at the KPRC building, and those are the quickest to go <laughs> for sure. Our all right, Steve writes in, I go back over five decades, fish sticks every Friday lunch throughout my elementary and middle school days. Mm, I still love me some fish sticks. And Rachel writes in, I remember they had a cherry or blueberry crisp in my elementary. That was awesome, or at least awesome to my third grade self. It was like <laughs> scooped out of a big pan with an ice cream scoop or something. <laughs> All of these sound so good. Where were they at mine? And finally, Lori writes in, the rolls, but that shredded carrot and raisin thing on the tray. I put most of it in the empty milk carton because our teacher wanted us to eat everything that they gave us. I know <laughs> what she's talking about and that is the least liked like salad on the side. Oh so gross but I'm with you right there Lori. <laughs> oh my gosh and you know what I'm school making the the lunch kit lunches yeah. are so difficult for me and I'm always trying to get the kids to get the lunch at school Lauren. It does not, not buying work it. it. Nope nope they want one from you mom. <laughs> I appreciate it. All right Lauren we'll see you in just a All little right, bit. Then. I'm looking forward to your story today too. <laughs> okay. All right, let's check in with Keith who did a quick wardrobe change and Christine and Frank. Oh, he did not. Oh. You didn't cha change yet. <laughs> fast enough to put the suit and tie on. Okay. Yeah. I call it a costume change, but that's coming up at the top of the hour. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> yes. He was rolling that corner from your studio to ours. Like, ah! <laughs> right into his seat. Yeah, great to see you. But you didn't break a nail, did you, Keith? Please. I did not know. Yeah, remember, hashtag don't break the nail. Yes. Never. And yeah, that's your secret to success, for sure. <laughs> yes. Uh, Jordan, how yes. lovely is she? Oh, uh, Jordan, yes, yeah, she's amazing. Yeah, she's. you talk about a, a star, a star in the making. She's yeah. going to do well for for herself in the United States for the next couple of years. Yeah, for sure. without a doubt. <laughs> hey, Courtney, great to see you. Uh, let's talk about the weather now. A few showers earlier, but the big story is going to be the heat, Frank. Yeah, it really is. It, it already is. It's 96 downtown, 94 southwest, Galveston at 93. That's hot for Galveston, just FYI. You can see these showers. A few moved through earlier today, but these have really moved up around Lake Livingston, continue off toward uh, Hardin County, so they're pretty much out of here for us. In fact, the future cast has a little shower or two through five 5.30, 6 o'clock, and then that's it. So you folks to the northeast, you may see a little more activity, but not a lot. If you do, when thunder roars, get indoors, just 20, 10% chances through 6 o'clock more than anything. It'll be on the warm side. Keep in mind, look before you lock. When it's 95, 10 minutes in, your, in the car, it's 114. In 20 minutes, it's 124. In 30, 129. That's at 95, and it's going to get even hotter than that as we move into the weekend and next week. Tropical Storm Grace moves right over Tulum. Now about to exit Mexico, the peninsula, into the Bay of Campeche. That will take it south of, Tem of Tampico. Expected to become a hurricane again, and I'll have the latest track on that coming up at 4. In the meantime, a warm, humid evening, a sea breeze shower tomorrow. I'll have that track also. That future cast just came in. And when we get to 100 degrees, all straight ahead in weather at well, 4. The heat, nothing to play with. Yeah. Okay. Know, be careful. Thank you, Frank. We want to give you a look now at some of the other stories that we're covering this afternoon. First, new developments from Washington, D.C., a man who claimed to have a bomb in a pickup truck sparking an hours-long standoff.
He's now under arrest. What we're learning about the man and the situation that unfolded outside the Library of Congress. Also coming up, Houston ISD giving employees a little extra cash if they've been vaccinated. How much money we're talking about and exactly who qualifies. And as kids get ready to head back to school, some parents may want their children to wear masks in the classroom. Consumer expert Amy Davis takes a look at which masks are best for kids. So that's coming up at 4 o'clock, and make sure that your shoes are tied and yes. your suit is on. you got about 20 minutes. <laughs> I will be all cinched up. We'll be ready to roll. All right, we'll see you at the top of the hour. And thanks again for filling in today, Keith. We appreciate it. Always a pleasure. We'll see you soon. All right, well, you know, since the pandemic, you've probably noticed shortages on all kinds of things, right? And if you're on the market for a better night's sleep, the last thing you want to do is order a mattress that won't arrive for months. But at te Texas Mattress Makers, your mattress will be made to order and ready in just a few days. As you know, and we want everybody else to know, this is a factory. This is not a showroom uh, uh, mattress store and so on and so forth. This is an actual factory. You got You're not just selling mattresses that other people make. Exactly right. And we got 140,000 square feet of manufacturing facilities. But you also have storage for raw materials, right? And there lies the secret. I knew last year when COVID came, that suppliers were shutting down. And I noticed that and I said, okay, now I'm gonna buy as much as I possibly can. But we bought enough that our inventories, raw inventories, were four or five times higher than normal. So if you come in here and you buy a mattress, it will take you, worst case scenario, seven working days from the day you were here till the day it's at your house. That's unheard of today. As weird as it sounds, it's unheard of today. So we don't have any issues, none whatsoever. That's pretty incredible that not only are you creating mattresses to order for people, so you come in, you find a mattress that fits you, then it's made specifically for you, delivered a few days later, mm -hmm. but also, if you've been out there mattress shopping, you will see that the prices here at Texas Mattress Makers are lower than anywhere else. And part of the reason is that they are locally made using locally sourced materials. Everything that we can possibly buy in the United States, we buy. There are no components in these mattresses that I don't buy in the U.S. None. The other thing is, besides the price, there is no store in the city of Houston or the surrounding area that will meet a customer. Let's say you walk in, Derek, have a conversation with him, an honest, open conversation about his needs, his comfort, his discomfort, how does he sleep, and then fit you in the mattress that you need. If you sleep well, then you look as good as you do. Brandon and I were recently staying with someone, I won't say who, in the guest room, and our lower backs were killing us when we woke up the next day. We couldn't wait to get home. And what's incredible, I can say, from a personal perspective, every mattress in our home came from Texas mattress makers. We sleep well, our guests sleep well. I love that you employ so many people from our community and they are feeding their families when you buy a mattress from Texas mattress makers. Before I let you go, let's talk about your website because you encourage people to visit your website, texasmattressmakers.com, take the sleep quiz and answer a few very basic questions about what type of sleeper they are. And we have people that work on our chat that actually are employed by us. We don't, I don't pay someone off-site to answer these questions like they have a list and you ask a question and here's your standard answers. It doesn't work that way. So if I use a, the chat feature on your website, I will be connected with an actual sleep expert in this building. That is correct. That works here, that has all the knowledge that they need to have about all the products that are here, all the components. My goal is, I want everyone that buys a mattress here to sleep well. You know that the catchphrase that I've come up with for Texas mattress makers, do you remember what it is? No. Sleeping is believing. I like that. And the way you said that, do it again. Texas mattress makers where sleeping is believing. I think you should use that. I think we should too. I've been sleeping on one of your mattresses for five years now. 
and I can attest, sleeping is believing. You will get a better quality mattress, locally made, employing people from our community, and you're gonna sleep better, most importantly. I agree with all of that. Texas Mattress Makers currently has a huge savings on hybrid quality mattresses starting at $449, plus free delivery on select mattresses. For more information, visit texasmattressmakers.com or call 713-341-6252. We're going to check in with Lauren Kelly, who is taking us down 90s country music lane today. Lauren, I'm waiting for this story. I know you're a fan too, Courtney. Coming up, I am chatting with country star Terry Clark. She is talking about some of her biggest hits, Life on the Road, and her upcoming show in Houston this Sunday. Houston Life will be right back. When country music was dominated by men, one female singer jumped right in and climbed straight to the top. Claire, uh, Terry Clark burst on the scene in 1995 with her self-titled debut album, which included hits like Better Things to Do and Poor, Poor, Pitiful Me. Now Terry is back with new music, a new tour, and even a fun walk down memory lane. Or a night or two. People have memories of seeing you at the Astrodome at the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. That's how far back we go, Terry. The Astrodome, right? That, it, yeah, I know. You mean what you really mean is that's how old you are, Terry. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that show fucking... was nerve wracking. Oh my gosh. Terry, you're in front of thousands of people and you're placed in the middle of the dirt, the rodeo dirt. What kind of feeling is that? It was a surreal time and a wonderful era, and I'm so happy I got to do that, you know, and, and it's not there anymore. I got to do it. It's amazing. Well, you know, the rodeo is still happening. We'll just have you come play at NRG now instead of the Astro. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> That's right. You have such great memories from your music and your lyrics. It feels like such a different time, doesn't it? It does. And... I'm so happy to be a part of something that's so nostalgic to so many people. And I think during COVID, a lot of people started to go back and listen to the music that made them feel something from a point, of, and, you know, from a period of time where everything was normal and they were happy and they were uh, young. And people just want to hear those songs. And I will be playing those songs till the day I die. And they're all in my show. You will be coming to Houston. You're going to be playing Tomball. This venue is so awesome. The Main Street Crossing, August 22nd is the show date. And you can get your tickets now. What I love about this venue, Terry, is it's not like the rodeo. This is a great intimate setting where people can really enjoy your music. And it can almost be like a storytelling kind of show, right? Yeah, that's, you know, I've done uh, entire solo tours, and it's it's me and a guitar. It's going to be really loose. Uh, people can yell out requests. It's going to be that kind of show. It's I just absolutely love it. But you know what else you're also known for? You're known for that that dark brown hair and your, your cowgirl hat, and I'm a little bit upset that you didn't have one on today, but <laughs> next time you come to Houston Life, we got you covered, Terry. We got this you ready for you. <laughs> Certainly do. That is that is uh, that is quite the blingy cowgirl hat. <laughs> if nobody nobody's gonna miss you. That's for sure. <laughs> well, Terry Clark, we're so excited to welcome you to Main Street Crossing. It's gonna be a great show, August twenty second, and we can't wait to have the fans just jam along with you and really just kind of take it back and get those old memories going, as well as making some new ones. So, thank you so Absolutely. much for your time. I can't wait. I'm looking forward to getting together with some Texas fans and partying that night and some sing-alongs. That's what I'm looking forward to. It's going to be a great time. And thanks for having me on the show today, Lauren. You know, I gave Terry the blinged out hat, so that's why I took the one without the bling today. <laughs> if you guys want the link for tickets to Terry, uh, Terry's show on Sunday, just log on to HoustonLife.tv. I love the way that you described her show, this intimate setting, kind of like a storyteller's. I mean, yeah. she's really going to kind of take requests and talk to the audience. And You know, I had such a fun conversation with her, and I totally fangirled. I took it way down memory lane. That was one of the very first mu country music videos I ever watched. Yes. And in a world where it was 
Alan Jackson and George Strait and John Michael Montgomery and Garth Brooks, she was the first female to really take the reins and go. Of course, Shania Twain followed and kept down the pop road, but she really stuck to her guns, kept it country, and this is going to be such a fun show. She was like, you guys, come on out and I'll, I'll take a glass of whiskey with you. I was like, oh, oh. now you're speaking some country language. Well, listen, poor, poor, pitiful me takes me back to Midland, the yeah. Cactus Moon, Rachel McNeil. Me, I mean, there are so many, we just would howl that song oh, on the dance floor. Oh, I, so. I need videos of this. Why aren't there videos of that, Courtney? Thankfully, there are not. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, I'm ready for it now. See, this uh, ain't yeah. my first rodeo. We got to go see this show this it, We do, definitely. <laughs> Lauren, thanks for bringing that to us today. Sure. Super fun. We're going to check in with Joe Sam now, who's enjoying a favorite summer pastime on the beach. Hey, Joe. Hey, Courtney. So I'm just finishing the final touches on my beautiful sandcastle. <laughs> just kidding. When we come back, we're going to be talking about the actual creator of this sandcastle and his classes that he has with Sandy Feet Sandcastle Services and how you can come and check out this amazing sandcastle competition happening this weekend when Houston Life returns. Welcome back here to Houston Life. We are on the beautiful beach here in Galveston, the East Beach, to talk about this amazing AIA Houston Sandcastle competition. We told you a little about it earlier. Now we're talking about this beauty right here. Look at this amazing structure put together by myself. <laughs> Just joking. We have the instructor right here and the creator of this beautiful sandcastle, Emerson, with Sandy Feet Sandcastle Services. This is going to be great because you actually show people how to create these beautiful structures. Tell us about what you did for us today. Yeah, absolutely. So this is a pretty good example of the sort of stuff I'm going to be teaching right here on uh, East Beach on Sunday. So uh, come on out and I'll show you how to make a cool sandcastle like this. Absolutely. Now, how much time and dedication goes into making this? Because it takes a lot of effort to create this and to keep it standing tall. <laughs> yeah, I mean, absolutely. It can take any amount of time. This took me about an hour and that's probably mostly what we're going to be doing on Sunday is uh, hour long projects like this. That's because he's a professional. I think this would have probably taken me an entire day to try and get there and, and the detail in it is absolutely amazing. Again, give people information about how they can check out the class. Do they have a website they can go to? Yeah, absolutely. So if you want more information about the sandcastle lessons I offer, go to galvestonsandcastles.com. And once again, I'm going to be here on East Beach. Uh, it's Sunday. Classes are at 11, 1, and 3. And you can find me down by the water's edge, straight down from the pavilion. Building. Now, I was going to say the best part to me would probably be knocking the castle down because that's what I really like. So let's actually really get a little bit more information about the event that you're going to be able to check out on this beautiful beach here. Rusty, tell us again, this is going to be free for everyone to come out here, but those funds, the donations that yeah. it comes from the teams comes who are participating. The, yeah, it comes the, don the, the, the amount raised comes from the teams and the sponsors. They pay for it. It's free and open to the public. We encourage the public to come. The only thing you have to pay for is $15 for parking. That goes to the city of Galveston. Absolutely. And we have this beauty over here. She was the actual creator of the Travis Scott, the one that Courtney likes. Yeah. Talk about that really quickly because I know you're going to be looking for some of those more sandcastles with the creativity. Oh, absolutely. I was really proud of that sculpture. Um, <laughs> we worked really hard on that and we were really proud. I think that we got some Travis Scott attention on Instagram. Um, so hopefully we see that level of creativity and inspiration on the beach on Saturday. Absolutely. And it kicks off at what time again? 10 a.m. Building starts at 10 a.m., ends at 3, awards are at 4. All right, awards at 4 o'clock. So you can come out here like we mentioned earlier and vote on your favorite one. We're going to walk back over to this beauty right here because I'm going to probably try and look, stump it down. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Got him a little scared, but make sure you come out, get out here early because parking is going to probably be piling up as the competition starts. We're going to have more information about the Sandcastle competition on our website, HoustonLife.tv. We're going to go and play in the water right now, Courtney. <laughs> great job, though. That was awesome. I know it's going to be a great time on the beach this weekend. Joe, thanks so much. Well, after the break, a look at what's coming up on tomorrow's show, including something that's going to entertain your kids. And as we head to break, let's check in with Nichelle Turner for a look at what's coming up on Entertainment Tonight. Hey, Nichelle. Courtney, tonight on ET, we're with Simone Biles. Her life after the Olympics, what she's telling us about her next move. Plus, Ant Anstead on his Renee Zellweger romance. You don't want to miss it. That's tonight at 6.30 right here on KPRC2. Now, stay right there because Houston Life will be right back.
Tomorrow on Houston Life, Tangie Patton, our friend of Good Taste TV, is back with some sensational summer salads. Ooh, and a Prosecco punch recipe mm. that's perfect for a hot summer day. Mm -hmm. And our favorite cartoon pups are teaming up for Paw Patrol, the movie. Actress Marseille Martin, who voices Liberty, is chatting all about the popular pups hitting the big screen. All right, we are going to get a final look at what you had to say at our question of the day. Hi, AJ. We're going to ask you this question, too. <laughs> okay. What were your favorite school lunch items? Let's take a look at what you have to say. And the first one is Robert. We, and he says, we have something called a gold brick sandwich, hamburger yeah. chopped up and mixed with onions, cheese, yellow mustard, mixed together and put on hot dog buns. Oh, those were so good. That That's what he said. <laughs> that, that, sounds, that sounds good without the yellow mustard. I know. What's your favorite thing to eat at school? So, um, I, don't, I don't eat the... Um, I don't eat the school lunch food, but my favorite thing there before I started like packing my own lunch was um, like the pizza. Yeah, for sure. And awesome. to be clear, I don't think you're packing your own lunch, are you? <laughs> Is that mom? <laughs> Does mom pack a really good lunch? <laughs> uh, one more day, today, one more guys. day left of summer. <laughs> Lauren, it's great to see you. Okay, we're going to check in with Keith and Christine now for the news at four. We'll send it over to you guys. I love it. I'm right there with AJ. No <laughs> mustard and love pizza day. Yes, yes. seriously. <laughs> win win. <laughs> day. Yeah, but that gold brick sandwich sounds oh, good, though. We no. need to bring that back. That's no, very interesting. No. <laughs> it's an interesting name, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Very good. Hey, great to see you guys. We'll see you again tomorrow on Houston Life at 3 o'clock.